So don't be surprised if you go last because 90% of the people have to go last. And you want it like that anyway, because when you're standing up for your rights, it is, it, it's, it, I think there's something very comfortable, at least for me, when I'm in there by myself with them. Because I can, in those type of situations, I can be more transparent and say more things that I want to say, you know. But when it's a lot of people looking and everything, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to honor the court. I'm trying to, in some kind of way, you know, not, you know, alert the public in any kind of way. That's the reason why you do send the paperwork to him, too. He said he tried to do that, but for some reason, the clerk didn't file it. But those are usually notices that you're trying to give them to give them a heads up of how you intend to come into the court and what you're going, what issues you're going to be bringing in and addressing. You know, you're making a special appearance. And I'm here to make a determination about jurisdiction. This is spe- this is a special appearance. It's not general. And in this special appearance, I need to ask you a couple of questions prior to, you know, me entering into any plea into the record. Because when you enter a plea, you grant jurisdiction. Why would I plead into a jurisdiction without knowing what jurisdiction I'm pleading into? Why would I plead into something? Why would I contract to something and I haven't been given all the, um, you know, fully informed of all the facts, you know, feel fully informed about what I'm get, getting involved in? All right, let's get back to it. Well, I need to know which of these two jurisdictions that uh, you intend to try me. It's very important because they, they're done different ways. The rules of civil procedure are very different in a criminal jurisdiction, obviously for common law and a military. No one's asking you, you know, no. So we just need to show, did you, were you able to cure your license with the DMV or you don't know? Your Honor, I, I, again, I, I need to get these other questions answered. I, I, I. Okay, that was that was a nice little thing. You see how the judge just tried to go straight into the license. You know, you're either there to get your business done or you're there to conduct the business that they want to do. All right. And if we have made a determination on my question for you, there's no need to get into the matter of the driver's license or anything like that. We can't proceed until we address this issue. And sometimes you may have to ask this a couple of times, you know, because that is a psychological attack. That is a part of their a toolbox they got, you know, to try to, you know, move on, uh, just move forward. And because that that's based off the principle that silence is acquiescence. So if you give in to something, you agree to it. You know, this is where, this is what fundamentally what the belligerent claimant was all about is about that. Hey, when you're trying to assert a right and somebody's not trying to give you a right, you know, a lot of times they'll try you a couple of times to be sure you understand your rights, to be sure that you understand your rights, you know, they don't just acquiesce and roll over. And that's, and that's what frustrates a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people are not meant to do this right here because they think they can get, get some magic paperwork or say some magic words and everything is just going to magically disappear. And that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's what the, you know, when you file the paperwork, you're making a record. You need to understand that you need to, the, what everything, how the record can change from being in your favor to not being in your favor. The record can change. By what you say, do, or act in some kind of way. You could cause, they call it recontracting. But the record can change. And you need to understand that. She asked him that question, so he did the right thing right here. He did the right thing. You know, I need to know what the jurisdiction is. is, And uh, I need to know also um, who the injured party is. You know, the nature and cause of this. I need to know who the injured party is. Okay. Uh, I need to know who's bringing the claim. How about, okay, the state is. So here, here's the deal. Do you want to have a trial date? I can give you many trial different dates, and you come in and you can ask all the questions, and they have to prove the charges against you. So Thank you, Your Honor, but I, I don't think you'd be violating your oath of office by doing your duty under the Constitution. Okay? I, So like she first started begging now. Look, I have to get back to your case. And I've seen judges, you know, say you say something to them and it scare them to death, you know. Yana, will your bond withstand the commercial liability that is being introduced into this courtroom today? <laughs> you know, you can say that it's some mean ass shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like, but yeah, she seemed like she's just trying to get him out of there. You know, he hit up with questions. A lot of times they don't even understand what you're talking about. 
They really truly don't know because they don't know the Constitution. They are administrators. You have to understand this. I think I think where y'all get thrown off is y'all think, oh, they know all this all this law, and you know, you, you give them too much respect. Number one, you give them too much respect. All right. A lot of times they ain't read the Constitution. They don't know what it's talking about. Some of them do, some of them don't. You know, some of them they don't study no law on a daily basis. You know, look look at what they do. All they do is just come in and negotiate plea deals. You know what I'm saying? Or 90%, 99% of the people who come to traffic court just pay the ticket and get the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what they're dealing with on a daily basis. They are administrators. They're administrating something. All right. They got to know a couple of things, but they they are administrating state uh, legislative statutes. I, they work for the legislator. They are employees of the legislator. And sometimes people forget that. And they attack these people. It's, I, I'll give you an illustration. It's just like with T-Mobile. Right, T-Mobile has a CEO. Okay, the CEO or the CFO, they are the ones that can... Um, that can bind the corporation. They're the ones that are responsible for the corporation. They're the ones listed on the Secretary of State's uh, website. All right? So when I call T-Mobile and I start talking to a customer service rep, and I'm talking to the customer service rep, and I say, hey, I need you to take some of these calls off my bill. And the customer says, well, I can't do that, sir. You know what I'm saying? And I get pissed off. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, well, you know what? I'm going to sue you, and I'm bringing you to court. (laughs) No, the customer service rep is immune. And you say, I need your name. He said, I can't give you my full name. I'll give you my number, though. She don't have to give you her name because she's not liable because she's doing what she's told. Her boss told her what to do or say in that particular situation. And that's what she better do or she's going to lose her job. So she's not liable. It's the same thing in the state or municipality. They're doing what they're told to do. And as long as they do that, they are immune because they're doing what they're told to do. They're immune. It, it, it's, it's a fact. When you sue a public official, you're actually suing the state. You're suing the state because the state is who they work for. The state is who's telling them what to do. Unless you can prove that they acted outside the ambit of that delegated authority, and now they become personally liable. They lose that immunity. But for the most part, you coming in there hitting them with all these questions. A lot of times, they just be, they just be, they following a procedure, kind of like working at McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like working at McDonald's. You know, they got, you know, you put burgers together. It's assembly line. You know, they doing this, and here you come, you knocking everything, and they they gotta go off. They gotta go off they uh, off they regular course, and then they gotta deal with something that they may or may not be prepared for. <laughs> 